Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Mark. Um, it's like all the speakers, it's really nice to be here and talk about uh, what you kind of work on and, and, and share some ideas. Um, when Mark asked me to uh, come and speak about Theory Scotland, he gave me a kind of a uh, little bit of a tip along the lines of talking about bridging um, old and new media. So my name's Kat Cochran. I was a project manager of Theory Scotland. Um, the, the, the project's still kind of live at the moment. Um, and uh, but it ran. It started off in uh, March two thousand and fourteen, and it kind of went on to uh, last year when we managed to publish a book. Just make sure I can click this. Yep. So the initiative was um, the kind of brainchild of Sarah Drummond and uh, Lauren Curry, who uh, started Snook, which is a Glasgow-based service design agency. And uh, basically what we wanted to do, the whole idea was to get people to write a letter to the future of Scotland. It was as simple as that. That was our mission. Because we just felt frustrated that uh, mainstream media wasn't really picking up on what people of Scotland were wanting to say. Or politicians weren't speak, uh, like picking it up unless there was like an election or there was like some kind of profit in it. So we decided um, to kind of start a platform. So we started off early and had to decide like how we were going to forge that. Um, the most important thing for us was, it goes. Yeah, um, we were really, really keen that the project stayed apolitical because a lot of people thought it was like a yes campaign basically because of the branding and the blue colour and everything and because it was in the year of the referendum. So that was, that was really, really important and we wanted to just gather citizen participation and open democracy. That was like a kind of goes to that. Um, and we just wanted to invite everybody basically that had a connection to Scotland, whether you're born and bred in Scotland, whether you had lived in Scotland or born in Scotland and emigrated, whether you were from the age of five or 85. So we decided to, uh, timing's great, <laughs> see if that goes on. Yeah, so the dreams and the goals were to try and gather enough letters from people uh, with connection to Scotland and it was all about the future, writing about the future, and making it very much not about what was happening in the referendum, but thinking beyond that. We wanted to get away from the binary thing. We wanted people to think about what a Scottish high street might look like, what their kids' education might look like, uh, green issues, environment stuff, new brand, whatever, whatever. It was like a black canvas, so kind of like that, simple as that. So the goals were to gather enough letters to publish a book, Try and get it into Parliament in some kind of way, we weren't quite sure about that, but also to get it into schools. And so th those were the three things. So we kind of forged forward and um, I always put this up because that on the left there is so wanky and it turned into that <laughs> because I hadn't actually came on the project at that point and I said, what, what is it? we're no wanting people writing Shakespeare, so <laughs> I had to get down to that. So I think the designers in the room might appreciate that a bit more. So this is like our landing page. Um, if you go to dearescotland.com, and we decided to uh, go forward with the digital because even though it was very non-digital, we wanted people to write letters, you know, and beautiful relationship between the brain, the hand, and a pen and a bit of paper. Uh, but obviously we had to go digital. So we had two um, ways of doing it whereby people could write letters and but also be able to submit their letter online because you know not everybody wants to do it that way. So to go into the kind of old and new media side of it, um, Yes, we did have a Twitter, we had to have a Facebook, we used MailChimp for the newsletter, we had to hootsuite everything, that was such a nightmare, anybody who was like, you know, <laughs> social media scheduling, Jen. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's, 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 it's a pain in the ass. But we had to do all that sort of thing, you know, to get the word out. And as you can see, the branding was quite clear. So it was a real sort of design-led project, but also just keeping it simple and just trying to get the letters through. So on to the next slide, hopefully, um, is... Bridging also, like all media, because I'm quite old fashioned, right? And I love local radio, you can never underestimate the power of local radio. So, as, the, as everything sort of gathered, as momentum started going, it was great to be in local newspapers, that was like the Courier, you know, local radio, Sunny Govan, uh, doing TED Talks, doing like local new, uh, YouTube thing, or well, that was like uh, Loki, you know, Loki, he's uh, the guy about town, and then we were on the river side. So, it was kind of like the social media side, but also the kind of older side. So, that, that was like kind of duplicitous um, in the project, and, and both had to be balanced, and they, they both worked quite well. So, I can't remember what's on this next slide, so I'll be as surprised as you guys. Uh, yeah, so the letters started rolling in, <laughs> which was really, really cool. So, people started sending letters. So, basically, like, you know, they arrived on the doorstep and it was a beautiful, beautiful thing because I had the privilege of reading all these letters to the future of Scotland. Um, so they just, they just started arriving and it was really exciting. Um, 
and this was kind of like on the build up to the referendum but we also decided to not stop it there we wanted to um basically the way it worked it was like six months before the referendum six months after so we could get a sort of like before and after and it was you know getting away from that um so the letters were amazing and it was like from five to like 85 was a was a scope and people writing all sorts of things like i've told this story before i'm sorry if anybody else has heard this but um it's one of the, the prompt cards that we had when we did like events was what makes you uh, what about Scotland makes you cry and this guy stood up and he says I don't know about what Scotland makes me cry but Glasgow City Council makes me greet every day so, <laughs> so there's a lot of fun in amongst all this you know people were, people were just coming up with in, incredible things and then people would take this and go oh god I've not written a letter for about x number of years and we said it doesn't matter you know we'll give you a spare one it's, it's totally fine so, like I say, the, the letters started rolling in, we realised we'd enough to uh, publish a book, but then we did the Kickstarter thing and I was like up all night and all day because it's a 24 hour thing, so obviously we had the, uh, the offers of different, different things, and again, as you see, it's very branded, it's very, you know, but that was important to us, and then we did the old media thing of trying to just get out there and uh, do the local radio and everything with it, but also obviously the tweets, the Facebook, the telling everybody, you know, so it was really, we had to bridge the two and they were both just as important as each other. So, um, so these were the offers and everything. So luckily enough, uh, people gave us money and believed in us and uh, we got 10 grand, so we were able to publish the book. So this next slide. Yeah, so dreams came, came into reality whereby this has been available since uh, September last year. That was at a, a launch in the uh, Book Gallery in Edinburgh. And also we've got other kind of like bags and merchandise and stuff like that. So it, it kind of it turned out really good. And the, the, book, the book is fantastic. The book is, and I'm not, I'm not just being biased, but it's not me that's written it, it's the people of Scotland. So it's kind of like really, really good. So we, uh, that, that was a beautiful moment to see that come off the press. Uh, just gonna go here. Use a that again. Let's see if that goes. Yeah, so the other thing, the other dream was to get into Scottish Parliament. We had a really um, good connection with Bill Kidd, who's um, MSP for, M yeah, for Annie's Land. So I met uh, that wee woman uh, in September there, and luckily she was wearing blue, and I was like, did you really mean to do that? Because it's the exact same colour as the Scottish branding. So that was really cool because we were able to sort of, all the, the premise at the beginning was, was be able to hand what the people of Scotland were saying to the First Minister. And it didn't matter if it was Nicola Sturgeon, because when we started it, she wasn't in charge. And this was our exhibition last year um, in Parliament as well. So people were able to sort of, um, you know, like see that it was kind of happening and everything. And this was really good because it was a chronological um, story of the, of the project. Um, and I think the next one is, yeah, the, the other thing we wanted to do was to get into schools. So this here on the left is, or both of them actually, is a, a school kit. And we designed it for 7 to 11s, 12 to 15 and 16 to 18, whereby uh, students and young people, the future of Scotland, could write about the future of Scotland. So these kits are actually available if you contact Snook. Um, and it's really, really good because the letters that young people have written are just fantastic. It's total insights and I'm just, I was just blown away with these particular ones. So that's, that's kind of the future of Data Scotland now since the book's been published, the exhibition's been done. So anybody that's a teacher, get in touch and do that. And with every project, if you get any kind of bonus, it's an absolute diamond. So dearest, a guy in, in Mumbai got in touch with us and said, we'd like to do Dearest India. And I went, oh, there's a good chance that they're going to get more letters than us. That's really like, <laughs> and they've been the biggest democracy in the world. And I went, you know, five billion people, or a billion people, sorry. And uh, yeah, so, and then when people actually came and said, listen, we'd like to do Dearest Scotland. So this was a woman up in like, Inverness, near, far in Inverness. And she said, I'd love to do it. So that's really, really cool that she did that. And then when the First Minister tweets you, or retweets you, then you're just like, you know, I was, I was made up. And then people in their wisdom want to give you awards as well. So little extras that happen in your project is pretty good. But these things wouldn't have happened without digital in my, in my mind, you know, as well as, as like local radio. So the old media and the new media all sort of converged uh, to make these things happen, these wee bonuses. And the thing about um, that I, I, I kind of didn't mention, but I'll mention now, is with this book, um, we really wanted to give something back to Scotland. We didn't want to just make it a money-making scheme. So anybody that buys this book, half the proceeds go back to or go to Scottish Literacy Project. So it was kind of like a nice round robin of um, 
being able to say right, it, all the you know people in in Scotland, connection to Scotland, are writing letters, and therefore any money that's made it goes back into Scotland, it goes nowhere else. So it's good to just give back and get involved with Scottish uh, the Scottish Book Trust and everything. And I think this is the last slide. Yeah. So the moral of the story is. Is that any project that's going to start off digital or any project that starts starts off analog to get the word out? You really need to use both of them. Do you know what I mean? The two come together. And I'm really old school, and I'm I'm not like a digital geek. But then I realised like Hootsuite, yeah, okay, Hootsuite does work. Then I was also like, no, local local radio is just like amazing too. So really, it's just like a convergence of the two, and that's that was the moral idea of Scotland's uh, story. So thank you very much.